And the default device did not do that. How do I go to it? Is settings. Let's That's audio mixer. And the default device in my place. It is. So why did it say it worked? Everything should be set up. Hello and welcome to the Granny Handicap live stream. I'm Dennis Cole, your hostess for the evening, and I think I am ready to start. Oh. Got Corrine here by my side, my ever present kitty. And we are going to talk about disabilities. I'm going to get a drink real quick. Oh, this one. Yeah. Where did it go? There it is. Okay. Aloe juice. With honey. Mm. Okay. Now I am ready to begin. So, what shall we talk about tonight? Let's see who's on the live stream. I see Academy Impossible. Hi. And GIB ABC. GI Gia. G, A, B, C. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but welcome. Good to have you all on tonight. And if anybody has any questions or comments, please put it in the chat. Or you may call me on, you may text me on my text line and I will see it. Otherwise, I'll just go ahead and get started. So we've been talking about a lot of different disabilities. Let's um let's see. Let's talk about fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a disability that is a hidden disability and a lot of people have it. So why don't we talk about that because I have it. So I can speak from someone who has this particular disability. So let's talk about fibromyalgia tonight. So if no one has something different to talk about, and I'm not seeing anything in the chat, so I'll go on ahead. So let's look up, and I ought to um, bring out my little notepad file and I need to go to my screen share. All right, now you can see what I'm looking at. So I'm going to look up fibromyalgia from DuckDuckGo. So Right. Have a look and see. All right, let's look at CDC's site. 
Fibromyalgia is a condition that causes pain all over the body, also referred to as widespread pain. Sleep problems, fatigue, and often emotional and mental distress. People with fibromyalgia may be more sensitive to pain than people without fibromyalgia. This is called abnormal pain, perception processing. Fibromyalgia affects about 4 million U.S. adults, about 2% of the adult population. The cause is not known, but it can be effectively treated and managed. The most common symptoms are pain and stiffness all over the body, fatigue and tiredness, depression and anxiety, sleep problems, problems with thinking, memory, and concentration, headaches including migraines, and I do have migraines. Other symptoms may include tingling or numbness in hands and feet. I have been diagnosed with idiopathic um, peripheral neuropathy, which is often associated with diabetes, but I'm not diabetic. Pain in the face of, or jaw, including disorders of the jaw known as temporomandibular joint syndrome, or TMJ. I have that. Digestive problems such as abdominal pain, bloating, constipation, and even irritable bowel syndrome, known as IBS. I have always had digestive problems, mostly stomach pain. Um, risk factors. Fibromyalgia can affect people of all ages, including children. But most people are diagnosed during middle age, and you are more likely to have fibromyalgia as you get older. I was diagnosed at about 35. Some other factors have been weakly associated with the onset of fibromyalgia, but more research is needed to see if they are real. These possible risk factors include sex. Women are twice as likely to have fibromyalgia as men. Stressful or traumatic events such as car accidents or post-traumatic stress disorder. And I've had many stressful and traumatic events in my lifetime. Repetitive injuries. Injury from repetitive stress on a joint such as frequent knee bending. Um, I have back problems and neck problems from lifting heavy stuff. Illness such as viral infections, family history, and obesity. As far as I know, nobody in my family has fibromyalgia but me, but I am obese. And doctors usually diagnose fibromyalgia using the patient's history, physical examination, x-rays, and blood work. How is it treated? It can be effectively treated and managed with medication and self-management strategies. Um, medications including prescription drugs and over-the-counter pain relievers. I have been on prescription pain meds in the past, but now I am currently just trying to control it with distraction. and. I do pretty well. Aerobic exercise and mul muscle strengthening exercise. I am trying to do a little of that. I am not being too successful lately. Patient education classes, usually in primary care or community settings. Stress management techniques such as meditation, yoga, and massage. Definitely meditation. I do a lot of that, and it does help. Good sleep habits to improve the quality of sleep. I haven't had much luck there, and especially after having um, COVID last December, my sleep has been totally messed up, where it was just partially messed up before. Cognitive behavioral therapy to treat underlying depression. CBT is a type of talk therapy meant to change the way people act or think, and CBT has been my friend 
definitely it has helped me a lot. In addition to medical treatment, people can manage their fibromyalgia with the self-management strategies described below, which are proven to reduce pain and disability so they can pursue the activities important to them. So, um, where are the complications of fibromyalgia? It can cause pain, disability, and the lower quality of life. U.S. adults with fibromyalgia may have more hospitalizations. You're twice as likely to be hospitalized as someone without fibromyalgia. Lower quality of life. Women with fibromyalgia may experience a lower quality of life. Higher rates of major, major depression. Higher death rates from suicide and injuries. Higher rates of other rheumatic conditions often co-occurs with other types of arthritis, such as osteoarthritis, which I have. That's um, your um, cartilage degenerating to the point that you've got bone against bone. That's what's going on in my back and my neck. I've got disc, disc dis degenerative disease, DDD. Um, you can also have rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythromosis, and ankylosing spondylitis. How can I improve my quality of life? Get physically active. And um, go to recommended physical activity programs. The Arthritis Foundation used to have excellent water aerobics classes that were made for people at a slower pace. So it was mostly walking across, across the pool back and forth and then doing range of motion exercises, you know, putting all your joints through the range of motion. And it really helped a lot. But it exhausted me so much to have that extra bus trip and everything on the way to pick up my daughter at daycare, I wasn't able to keep it up. And join a self-management education class, which helps people with arthritis or other conditions be more confident in how to control their symptoms, live well, and understand how the condition affects their lives. And I did that, and it helped a lot. So um, this link on self-management education programs is something that I want to look at later. I did not put this in a file, so let me do it. I'm going to do this. And my protection is expiring soon in WebRoot. I know I bought the new one, but I'm going to wait a few more days to activate it. This is the 27th of August. All right, and we are talking about fibromyalgia. And I'll put that here. And I'll get the um, And this is just fibromyalgia from the CDC. All right, so I'll put this link in the chat and get set up for the next link. All righty. So let's what else we can find out about fibromyalgia? Let's see.
Here's Arthritis Foundation. One of the sources that I have gone to in the past. Even though fibromyalgia technically is not arthritis, but it can have arthritis associated with it. So, and it's just fibromyalgia. So let's see what they say. Fibromyalgia can be confused with arthritis because it may cause pain in joints, muscles, and soft tissues, but it's considered a pain disorder. It's not life-threatening, but these symptoms can affect many aspects of daily life. So, um, Researchers think that people with certain genes are affected by a trigger. Then the pain signals sent through their central nervous system get turned up too high. That's why people with fibromyalgia react more strongly to pressure, heat, sound, or light than people without the condition. Imagine having a bad case of the flu with extreme tiredness, pain throughout the body, and fuzzy thinking. That's how some people with fibromyalgia describe the disease, and I certainly would. So, um, this is cool. And it tends to happen together with other health conditions, like restless leg syndrome. I have that. Depression. I've had problems with depression in the past. Somatization syndrome. Um, some people with fibromyalgia feel extreme anxiety about a physical symptom such as pain or fatigue. It can cause a lot of emotional distress and problems functioning. Headaches or migraine. Um, definitely migraine, and I do have TMJ, and this right side of my jaw has been bothering me a lot, so I'm going to go to a dentist to address that. And stomach and bowel problems, I definitely have had a lot of that. Um, there's a thing called the widespread pain index, which lists 19 areas of the body where it's common for people to, with fibromyalgia to have pain and tenderness. So, um, and uh, relaxation techniques. I've known a lot of people with fibromyalgia that had a lot of success with massage therapy. I never could relax enough for massage to be beneficial to me, but a lot of people say that it helps them. Mindfulness and meditation practices, definitely they have been helpful for me. And exercise, even though exercise is very painful, I have finally discovered kinds of exercise that are useful for me. And um, one of the things that helps me a lot is um, the site, um, oh, what is it? Oh, the lady that does it is Canadian, and she's been on PBS for a long time, and I can't think of 
of bomb. But anyway, this is another one that um, is helpful. So I'll put it up here. It has a little bit that the other one didn't have. So we'll go ahead and do that. So let's see. Sorry about that. My eye is itching tonight. Harvard Health is good. Let's have a look here. Because a lot of people get, you know, get told that, oh, it's all in your head. It's not real. <clears throat> oh, definitely it is good to uh, look at some of this. Because it is very real. I can vouch for that. I've had it since 1995 when they started uh, looking at the literature and decided that, yes, fibromyalgia is real. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a real condition that affects some 4 million of us in the US. It's a chronic pain syndrome that experts believe it might be caused by a malfunctioning nervous system. Researchers using MRIs to examine the brains of people with fibromyalgia have found abnormalities in the part of the brain that processes pain signals from the body. It appears this part of the brain is essentially boosting the intensity of normal pain signals, potentially causing the body to feel pain without a physical cause. It does sometimes run in families, which might be an indication of a gene problem. So... Oh, he was hoping it would have some links to some other articles. But it's a good article, so. No, I don't want any more newsletters. Unfortunately, my email is full. <laughs> And you have to watch because there are so many natural food sites or herbal remedy sites that want you to try this and that and all they're after is your money. I was, when I was in a fibromyalgia group, you know, a bunch of us tried a whole bunch of different things and really didn't find that they helped that much. So, you know, you want to be careful where you are getting your information from. 
Um, I would stick to sites like the CDC, Mayo Clinic, um, the NIH is good, Johns Hopkins is excellent. Um, so you want to be careful about anybody who suggests a special diet for fibromyalgia. Um, it may help with some of the stomach type stuff that happens with it, but it's not going to be a cure. Anybody who promises you a cure for fibromyalgia is just trying to sell you a bill of goods. So it, you know, it has no cure. So for any disease that doesn't have a cure, people tend to be, you know, trying this and trying that to see if anything helps. And um, when the pain gets really, really terrible, I use Kratom, which is a drug. It is a, an herb that is legal in some states. It's legal in Georgia still. And what's funny is that they were going to make it illegal, and a bunch of researchers stepped up and said, hey, if you make it illegal, we can't get it to study it. And they listened. I was surprised pleasantly surprised so it's legal in Georgia but if I cross the line to Alabama it's illegal there so you know I think that legislators should be careful about making herbs illegal if people are trying to study it to see if there is any benefit the the research is important because how can we know if it's not studied? That's the problem with alcohol recovery and the Alcoholics Anonymous programs or the 12-step programs that are built on it. Because there has been no scientific research that proves this effective. How can you know if it's an effective treatment if it hasn't been studied? So definitely, um, I'm a fan of the scientific method and scientific research, because how can you know if something works or does not work unless you study it? So, let's see. So I'm going to stay away from natural fibromyalgia treatments. Um, let's see. And I'll look down and see. Yeah, I'm skeptical of sites like Arthritis Health, Foods to Avoid with Fibromyalgia, and kind of, um, well, if it's talking about healthy eating, maybe, but I'm just not, um, you know. Okay, I'm not finding anything else to talk about here. Well, let's see. The Cleveland Clinic is a good source. Okay, let's see what the FDA has to say. We can look at the FDA approved treatments for fibromyalgia pain. So let's go up here and get this link and bring it down to the chat. Da -da -da. 
Okay, and we'll go over here and talk about it. And let me see if anyone else has joined us. Nope. Okay. We'll go over here and take a look. It affects 2 to 4% of the population, according to the American College of Rheumatology. Mostly affects women and tends to develop in early to middle adulthood. But men and children also can have it. In 1990, the American College of Rheumatology de developed criteria for diagnosing it, and this marked a major step forward in helping more people understand how to recognize the symptoms and how to treat them. So in 1995, they had that international conference to um, officially recognize fibromyalgia as a, a real condition. And 1995 was the year I was diagnosed. People with fibromyalgia are tri typically treated with pain medicines, antidepressants, muscle relaxants, and sleep medicines. In June 2007, Lyrica pregabalin became the first FDA-approved drug for specifically treating fibromyalgia. And then... Uh, these other two, they reduce pain and improve function in some people with fibromyalgia. The mechanism by which these drugs produce their effects is unknown. So, um, Lyrica was previously approved to treat seizures. <clears throat> and the um, side effects, I didn't like them, but Lyrica works for a lot of people, so I'm not saying it's a bad drug. I'm just saying that I had too many side effects with my body chemistry that it did not work for me. <clears throat> So, um, so I can't speak about Zimbalta or um, Zabella. I have not tried those. So, Bless your heart. Stiffness, I get that. Headaches, painful menstrual periods. I had such a bad time with those when I was in school that I would miss a week every six weeks because of it. Um, because the pain was so bad, I would actually get sick to my stomach. Um, my doctor... My uh, family doctor put me on the pill at 13 to um, stop that so that I wouldn't miss much time from school. Tingling or numbness of hands or feet. I have idiopathic neuropathy. Difficulty thinking and remembering. Some people with the condition also may also experience irritable bowel irritable bowel syndrome, pelvic pain, 
restless leg syndrome and depression and I have restless leg syndrome and I've had a lot of stomach type problems. Scientists believe that fibromyalgia may be due to injury, emotional distresses, or viruses that change the way the, bra the brain perceives pain, but the exact cause is unclear. People with rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and spinal arthritis may be more likely to have the illness. And um, you can have abnormal levels of substance P in the spinal fluid. I've never been checked for that. This chemical helps transmit and amplify pain signals to and from the brain. Researchers are looking at the role of substance P and other neurotransmitters and studying why people with fibromyalgia have increased sensitivity to pain and whether there's a gene or genes that make a person more likely to have it. Matalana says she felt her suffering was being dismissed as she went from doctor to doctor lo looking for answers. I sure had a lot of that. Many doctors suggested it was just stress. Some of them even made references that it was all in my head. I was eventually misdiagnosed as having lupus. I was misdiagnosed with a whole host of things. And, um... Finally, a rheumatologist who was just starting his practice diagnosed her with fibromyalgia. With my doctor's help, I started to feel better, she says. It made all the difference that I had a health care provider who could give me insights as to what fibromyalgia research was showing and that there were other people feeling what I was feeling. Definitely, I had a nurse practitioner who was keeping up with that research and she really helped me a whole lot um a lot more than the doctor who was supervising her um, was so family physicians general internists and rheumatologists are the doctors who typically treat fibromyalgia now that i'm older i go to um an internal medicine doctor and I really like her and I feel like she's really up with things she's not afraid to admit that she doesn't know and go look something up and she her bedside manner is great I really like my doctor and I really am glad that I found her so um, there's no diagnostic test for fibromyalgia as far as blood work or anything like that. Doctors make a diagnosis by conducting physical examinations, evaluating symptoms, and ruling out other conditions. Fibromyalgia can be distinguished from arthritis because arthritis causes inflammation of tissues and joints, and fibromyalgia does not. Another condition with simple, similar symptoms, hypothyroidism, can be confirmed with a blood test. And it's been confirmed many times that I had nothing wrong with my thyroid. So um, the criteria by the American College of Rheumatology includes a history of widespread pain for at least three months and pain in at least 11 of 18 tender point sites. And um, people may have find relief with pain relievers, sleep medicines, antidepressants, muscle relaxants, and anti-seizure medication. But medication is just one part of the treatment approach. Um, Water therapy really helped me a lot. Walking, jogging, biking, gently stretching muscles and other exercises can be helpful. And right now I'm doing walking and the gentle stretches. And um, emotional 
Emotional support also is essential, Matalana says. My husband always believed me, and when you have that kind of support, it makes a difference. It's really about facing chronic pain for the rest of your life. So dealing with the emotional impact and not just the physical side is very important. I've got a daughter who takes good care of me and is my best support. And it's worth its weight in gold because when you have something that has no cure and it causes you chronic pain, it's very easy to give up and just say, well, I can't deal with this. But all in all, you have to deal with it. But it's how you deal with it that makes all the difference. And I keep myself distracted. And that really works for me. So I play video games and I write and I do my book covers and I have engaging things that keep my mind occupied so that I don't think about how much pain hurts because with chronic pain the more attention you pay to it the more it's going to hurt it's weird but that's how it works so the more you can keep your mind off your pain unless you're at the doctor's office in which case you want to be brutally honest and it's hard when you're in the habit of hiding, you know, ignoring it so that you're not feeling as much of it. And, you know, it's the normal thing to do when you're disabled. You try to act as normal as possible. It really goes against what you're trying to do when you go to the doctor because you can't tell your doctor oh everything's fine nothing's bothering me <laughs> when it really is so let me think of another um question about it let's see um and daily life okay let's see what we find okay let's look at this study and we'll put that there and we'll go here And this is a study PubMed stands for public medical um so this is out of the National Library of Medicine, so it's a government source. The influence of chronic pain on daily life was studied in fifty eight patients with fibromyalgia. A male questionnaire, including, including a two-day diary, was used. Information was gathered on social background, employment status, symptoms, physical training habits, patients' experience of general health, physical condition, and the difficulties in performing motor tasks. And whether the patient considered them to be joy enjoyable, valuable, and meaningful. 55% of the group were working. Most were working shorter hours and changed work tasks. Um, <clears throat> In conclusion, symptoms influence daily life considerably. And almost all patients reported changes in habits and routines as a consequence of fibromyalgia. An assessment of the patient's total life situation gives valuable information for understanding the patient's ability to handle everyday life. So 
so there are similar articles and it's cited by those and all right so this is of course just the abstract not the the study itself so um these symptoms do influence people's daily lives. So, did I put that in the chat? Oh dear, I forgot to. So, this is some scholarly research. Let's look for a uh, user friendlier source. So, Let's see. <clears throat> WebMD is all right. It's um, not my favorite source, but, it, you know, don't use the symptom checker if you go there. <laughs> Definitely, um, it'll just make you think you have cancer when you don't. So over here and let me get the title okay it definitely does have effects on a lot of your life so I will that and my mouth is getting dry, so excuse me, but I'm going to drink some more of my stuff. That's better. I think I'm a little dehydrated. Okay, let's put this link in the chat. And oops, accidentally activated that. I didn't want to. I did not want to do that. Okay, now. Alrighty, this is from 2011. It affects relationships, parenting duties, and life decisions of people afflicted. It's characterized by widespread muscle tenderness and pain, fatigue, and sleep problems. Abnormalities in the way the body responds to and processes pain may play a role. And this online survey completed by about two and a half thousand people and 459 people with undiagnosed chronic pain conditions su suggests chronic pain causes significant changes in the way people live their lives. Here's the key findings. 92% say the condition has had a major effect on life decisions, including whether to remain in a relationship, start a new one, or change jobs. 95% of the 650 respondents with children under 18 says their pain affects parenting duties, making it difficult to manage their kids' schedules and enjoy their kids' milestones. I can vouch for that. They also say the illness makes it more difficult to manage the household. I agree. Less specifically, 68% say their pain limits their ability to care for their family, and I would agree with that too. The three top concerns of the 450 people who said the disorder affected their decision to have children were 62% worried about caring for a child. 53% wondered about their ability to go through childbirth. And 49% had fears about loss of more sleep after having a baby. And as a parent of two children, 
it did affect my ability to care for my children, but my younger one came through it okay. Um, my ability to go through childbirth, it was hard, but I was able to do it. The fears about loss of more sleep, yeah, you do lose more sleep when you have a baby, but I was able to keep jobs and keep working through it. So um, I would advise people who are considering putting off having children, go ahead and have children. You know, don't be so afraid that you don't try to have a child. I think that the joys of having children are worth all the struggles and yes it is harder but I was able to get through it and I think you would be able to too. It took two long painful years and countless doctor visits before I was diagnosed. But our survey respondents had an even lengthier process. Their average time was three years, says Lynn Matalana. Um, it took longer than that for me. I knew that something was wrong for, for many years before I got my diagnosis. So... Um, Diagnosis can allow people to work towards managing their pain more effectively, and research hope, researchers hope that enhanced awareness and education will make it easier for people in the future. I think definitely if you've got something wrong with you and you don't know what it is, it is mind-numbing. It's scary and... You don't know how to plan for the future. If you have a name to put on it, at least you know for the time being what the diagnosis is and you hope that it's accurate enough to last a few years. Um, Mickey Brown, RN of the American Pain Foundation, says in the new re news release that she has witnessed firsthand through her clinical work the impact that fibromyalgia and chronic pain have on everyday lives, on everyday activities that others take for granted, such as holding your child, walking your dog, or cooking a family meal. Absolutely because you think about all those things differently. I won't hold children unless I'm sitting down so that if I lose my hold on them, they won't fall to the floor. Um, this is something that is awful because I love holding children. But, you know, same with walking the dog. I have to be very careful to have a good hold on the leash. I have to make sure the leash is over my wrist and up this way, and I've got a good hold on it, and I've got a good hold in the other hand, too. This is the way the um, American Kennel Club trains people to hold a leash, but for me, it's an absolute necessity to be very careful how I'm holding the leash so that I don't drop it. Um, so, Brown says she believes a greater awareness of the problems caused by fibromyalgia will empower others to advocate for their health talk frankly with their health care providers, and speak out about their right to receive timely and appropriate pain care. Definitely. So, um, and about pain care, so many doctors are afraid with the epidemic of pain medications being abused a lot of providers are afraid to prescribe pain medicine at all. But what they don't realize is that 
if they prescribe it, if doctors prescribe a medication and you take it how it is on the bottle, not doubling up on your meds or taking extra from a friend when you ran out of yours, these practices will get you addicted. But if you follow the directions on the bottle, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. So I think doctors should trust their training. And if they are diagnosing pain meds in a reasonable way, and if we are willing to take it the way that they prescribe it, then I don't know why there's a problem with that. Because if you have chronic pain, you need to be able to get pain medication if you want it. But we need not, we who want the pain medication need to realize that you can't expect 100% pain relief. It is not going to happen. So we do not need to push doctors for 100% pain relief, which is unrealistic if you've got chronic pain. And we need to be willing to take the amount the doctor gave us and not push him or her to give us more. At the same time, we want to expect reasonable pain relief. And if the pain relief is not working, then we need to know what our options are. None of us want to get addicted, so we need to be careful about that. But it's so important to be able to get pain medicine, and now it is a lot harder because so many doctors are spooked by all of this legal action against the, um, the company that makes hydrocodone and I have taken hydrocodone in the past it's a good pain medicine and it works fairly well so as long as we are taking it the way we're supposed to I think that it's okay for doctors to keep prescribing it what we need to understand is the reason there is an opioid crisis is because so many people are giving their pain meds to other people. They're giving it to friends because the friend is like desperate for it. But if people are getting addicted, they need drug treatment and drug treatment needs to be cheaper so that more people can afford it. So it goes all the way back around to we need health care for everybody and we need mental health care for everybody. And until that happens, there's going to be people overdosing on various and sundry prescription drugs because we don't have enough mental health care to take care of everybody and we don't have the um what am i trying to say we we need more health care period more mental health care period so that people can have access to the therapy they need and the health care they need to be able to solve some of their life problems. So, and um, one thing you have to be careful about with pain with fibromyalgia is that you need not to be forced to do past your physical limits. I've had jobs where I had to lift heavy things and I didn't have anybody to help me lift those heavy things and that's why my back and neck are awfully messed up. So we need to have ways that handicapped people can ask for accommodations and get them. 
in workplaces. Not everybody can lift and not everybody should be required to lift when they're in certain jobs. So um, definitely let's look at water exercise for fibromyalgia. Because water exercise, I think, is the best exercise for fibromyalgia. If it is a warm water pool, and finding a warm water pool can be a challenge, because lap swimmers tend to like cold pools. And so it is sometimes hard to find a pool that has warm water in it and pool heaters. So different needs for different groups of folks. Especially if you're elderly and you've got joints like mine, the thought of getting in a cold pool is just, <sighs> it's painful. Cold can be physically painful to a person with fibromyalgia. So you need warm water, definitely. If you're going to do this water exercise, you need a way to get out of the pool because once you get in and you exercise, you're not going to feel like coming out of that pool. When I used to live in an apartment building, if there wasn't enough hot water and the cold started running in the shower, I would scream. It was that bad. It was that painful. Clenching is an involuntary reaction to stress. People tense their muscles and probably don't even realize they're doing it. Yep, that reduces blood flow to the muscles, which causes pain. That's why a stressful lifestyle plus too much couch time is a double whammy for conditions like fibromyalgia. Too little exercise slows the blood flow to the muscles. So fibromyalgia pain just gets worse. Revving your pulse is one remedy. Running, walking, and think with your husband. These increase your pulse rate so you're getting more blood to the muscles. That will reduce pain in muscles. The worst thing for pain is to lie there because then it will only hurt more. And I agree, folks, there was a time when I just laid there and I got a DVT. <laughs> uh, that's a blood clot in the thigh, which could have broken loose and killed me. So we caught it in time and I went to the hospital and I was given blood thinners and I was put on blood thinners for quite a long time. But, uh... Exercise helps, but gentle exercise, walking, stretching, and stopping before it hurts, and strength training all help control fibromyalgia pain and muscle tenderness. Exercise just three times a week improves life on many levels. Exercise can relieve fatigue and depression as well as help people make feel make help people feel better about themselves more in charge of their lives so definitely a lot of things to to do that help and exercise is very good for depression as well so what we need to do is be aware of exercise and forget no pain no gain instead say I'm going to try this and if I get to the point where it hurts I'm going to back off I'm going to do that motion again but I'm not going to do it as far I'm not going to push that muscle that far so that it hurts so much and 
really helps a lot of people. It helps me, definitely. So, um, if starting, oh, excuse me, if starting an exercise program seems too painful, start slowly. Start with flexibility exercises, stretching that improves your range of motion. Yoga classes, walking around the block, playing a round of golf can also get you started. Oh me, I'm getting sleepy. I <laughs> I don't want to fall asleep in my live stream. I've just been extremely tired today. And this is part of fibromyalgia that you just get exhausted for no reason. So um water exercise AK water aerobics is the easiest workout for people with fibromyalgia pain or any kind of chronic pain. If you can't exercise because of obesity or being overweight, very overweight, water therapy is a good place to start. Warm water can be very comforting. It can. It's it's very luxurious. Um, the exercise gets blood flow to muscles and tendons. And if you're in the water, your joints are not being stressed during exercise. Also, water offers resistance, which helps muscles get stronger. You don't need to know how to swim. And you're working out in shallow water with your head completely above water. And... Uh, in some water aerobic classes, you might bob in deep water with a foam belt or a life jacket. But it's um, the natural buoyancy of water helps you move. So you can do exercises that would otherwise be painful. And they can be done with an instructor or a physical therapist in a heated facility or in a backyard pool. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I've got to stop. I, I can't stay awake. This is terrible. I got enough sleep last night. In fact, I overslept. Hmm. Well. So. Water aerobics. So I like this article, but it doesn't go into enough detail on the exercises. Let's see. Oh, I am really... Struggling to stay awake here. Let me go back and see if anybody has come on the chat. And Academy Impossible and Guy ABC. I'm glad y'all are with me. I'm sorry that I'm sleepy. This is not good. I think I will make it an early night again tonight, and I apologize for this, but tomorrow night, hopefully, I'll have a little more energy, and I won't be falling asleep. So, to um, just kind of sum her up and do my disability moment that I do at the end of all of my broadcasts, um, 
Fibromyalgia is kind of hard to deal with. And if you know somebody who has fibromyalgia, please don't push them to exercise. Don't give them your pain meds. It's illegal to give someone else your pain meds. So do not do that. Um, what you can do is listen. If they're having a tough day, and they will probably have tough days when the weather changes, when the time change comes to your community, or any change in routine, if they have a fall, if they get in a car accident, they're going to have worse problems than someone who does not have fibromyalgia. So um, if they have a big argument with someone close to them, it might affect them more. So be aware if you want to help your friend or loved one with with uh, fibromyalgia, be aware if they're going through a tough time. Maybe just call them and say hi and ask them if they want to talk and tell them you're willing to listen and just let them talk, you know. But encourage them not to concentrate on how bad the pain is. And don't ask how bad their pain is. Just accept that if they are not doing much today, they're having a high pain day. So maybe offer to do something, uh, one of their chores they've got to do in the house, house cleaning. You know, you might offer to sweep for them or offer to just catch up the dishes and the, the sink in the kitchen. You know, little things like that that people have done to, for me when I've been having a rough time have helped so much. People see your messy house and tend to think, oh, that's a lazy person. But they don't realize how hard it is with fibromyalgia just to get out of bed, much less tackle the sink full of dirty dishes or or sweep or try to organize the clutter. You tend to develop a very messy house when you have fibromyalgia because you never feel up to house cleaning. It's like overwhelming. So just and the concentration and memory problems are hard because the more little decisions you have to make, if you're going through a stack of papers, for example, well, do I file this? Do I throw it away? Do I shred it? Sometimes these decisions, if you're having a high pain day, they're just overwhelming. So it's important to try to understand that if you know anybody with a disability, try not to push them to do more than they feel like they can do. Trust them to know what their limits are. And if you're worried that they're not getting enough exercise or their weight's ballooning out of control, um, that's really not something that you personally can do something about. You might suggest to someone that, oh, sweetie, you need to lose weight. You are way too heavy. And your fibromyalgia would be better if you were lighter weight. Well, the person already knows this, okay? That's not helpful. That will just start an argument between you two because the person will probably feel like, well, you have no idea what I'm going through. If you did, you wouldn't be pushing me to do these things. So it's more helpful to just listen or to just ask, is there anything that I can do for you right now while I'm visiting you? Or could I come over and do something for you? Offer to do housework for them. You know, that might mean more for your friend or loved one than anything you possibly could say about losing weight, better nutrition, whatever. Just offering to do something simple like sweep their floor might just mean the world to them. Or if you could watch the kids for a couple of hours while they take a nap. You know, 
just little things can mean so much. So, you know, but mainly listening. When a person is in chronic pain, they just, sometimes they don't see things that are obvious. And you have to be careful with that because you can easily start an argument that can tear down your friendship. But um, definitely just listening and offering to help with the physical things can mean a lot to someone who's struggling with it. So that's something to think about. And as with any grief situation, because disability has grief as a component and fibromyalgia will have that grief component too. Because a person may be telling herself, you know, oh, if I just exercised more, I wouldn't be this heavy and I wouldn't be feeling so bad. Well, that's kind of magical thinking because even if you lost all the weight, you would still have the fibromyalgia. You would still be in constant pain. So there are no miracle cures for this stuff. So just listening to somebody vent for a while. If you can be strong enough to just sit there and listen and not offer the thousand and one things that are advice things that you want to offer, um, if you can resist doing that and just listen to the person, because a lot of times when you're trying to generate these thousand and one solutions, you're not listening totally to the person with the problem. So instead of trying to solve all their problems for them, really listen and just let them talk and say, I want to understand. I can't really understand because I don't have fibromyalgia, but I have had the flu and I know how that feels. And if you're feeling like that all the time, wow, it's amazing you get anything done, right? So maybe point out something that they have done that if it's genuine, if you really feel that they deserve the praise, because, you know, if you want to say that somebody's done something wonderful, you need to kind of back off from that and say, okay, what is one specific thing that I can compliment someone on that they have done recently that I thought was a good thing that they did? And it has to be an honest compliment. Don't generate compliments out of thin air. But if you like the shirt somebody's wearing, it's, you know, complimenting that is great. If you like a person's hairstyle, if um, if you like that a person was trying to grow a plant, you know, anything that you truly admire about a person is fair game for compliments. Just try not to see somebody disabled as heroic because that's really not helpful. Most of us don't feel very heroic. Thank you very much. But, uh, you know, the kind of compliments that a person is more likely to not argue with is something that you've seen that they've done that is an accomplishment, maybe an artwork that they've done or a little sculpture that they've done. And if it's something you genuinely like, you could state what it is you like about the item that they made. And that's something that will be meaningful and will hopefully stick with the person. Because it's so nice to be reminded of what you can do when you're disabled, when you're feeling bad. It's just really nice to hear someone say, oh, well, I've been noticing that little thing on your your mantle. Did you make that? And 
if they did, then they'll tell you about it, and maybe about what motivated them to make that. And you might say, well, I love the way you blended those colors, if that's true. Or you could say, I love the shape of it. It really uh, reminds me of such and such. Or just, you know, um, acknowledging that a made object is there might help the person think about something other than how much they hurt or how tired they are. So definitely there's things you can do that are helpful. But giving advice is 99% not helpful. It might be 1% helpful, but if you really want to help somebody with fibromyalgia or any other disability, find something that is truthful to compliment them on. And if you love them, there should be many, many things that you could compliment them on. But try not to say general things like, oh, that thing on your mantle is nice. Nice is not really a term that's going to help anything. You know, it, it's it's not specific. Try to pick a specific thing about either the shape that catches your eye or the coloring or um, what it represents. If that touches your heart, say so. You know, specific things are a lot stickier as a compliment. They stick to the self-esteem better than just saying, oh, I like so-and-so in your house. It's nice. You know, nice isn't very descriptive, but um, if you notice that, oh, that mahogany color goes well with this other piece of furniture that is also mahogany colored or the contrast in that and the blonde oak thing you know if you like that contrast only if you really like it people can tell if you're making a compliment about something and you really don't feel that way so always make honest compliments it's better for the person you're talking to if you are wanting to really help them then only make compliments that you actually feel right here. And that way, and if you make them specific, then the person will be more likely to believe it. Because we don't want to believe positive things about ourselves. That's human nature. We don't want to be conceited. We don't want to be self-centered. So we tend to deflect compliments. So if you want that compliment to get through the person's shield they're putting up and stick to their self-esteem, it's first got to be honest, and second, it's got to be specific. So honest and specific. That's two for the win. So that's my Handicap Minute. And thank y'all for joining me tonight. And I think I am going to sign off and uh, try to not feel so sleepy. It's too early to be sleepy. But um, thank you for being with me. And hopefully tomorrow night I will have more energy. So take care and good night. And see you tomorrow night. Good night for now. Bye-bye.